five and year six. It's Miss Dyer here with your next video in our writing learning journey. Week beginning Monday the 25th of January 2021. Now you can probably tell by my voice that I'm quite excited for today's lesson. It is um, lesson four or video four in our sequence but please don't worry if you've missed the first few you can join in today and it won't take you long to pick up what we're doing. So as always we'll start with a recap. We'll have a look at our model text and we'll give ourselves a target or something to focus on in our writing today and then you'll have the chance to go away do your writing and send your work to Mrs PA and I. Okay so let's start with our recap. Our inquiry question this week is how does my description of Aaron Moore's storm create a picture in the imagination of the reader? Now you'll remember that Aaron Moore is the setting of our book, The Stormkeeper's Island, which you've been enjoying with Miss Hike. And I know Miss Hike has been doing lots of work with you on the effect of personification, onomatopoeia and similes. So you will be able to apply that knowledge to this week's writing. Now this week we've also been using the task wheel. And this has been really helping us navigate or um, sort of stick to a plan of how we're going to achieve our outcome. So how on Friday are we going to answer this question? So on Monday, we were focused on the first quarter, gathering and organising and identifying the tasks. Then for the last few days, we've been in this area here, generating ideas, deciding which is best and having a go at our writing. Some of us did some evaluation yesterday. We're thinking, how well am I doing? What do I need to improve? And then came back to this area to make their improvements. Now, Mrs. PA and I, we've been extremely impressed with the determination and perseverance that's been shown by lots of pupils this week. And of course, that's all to do with our Explorers Gateway. Lots of you are um, just showing real determination and perseverance through setting yourselves not only one target, but two. Some of us, uh, some of you have messaged us and said, oh, miss, this was really quite hard, but I had a break and I came back to it. I didn't give up. I persevered and I did it. We're really proud of everybody who's really embodying that um, determination and perseverance. Now, as you know, some children are focusing on creating a learning journal this week, as we do in school, while some people are focusing on completing a written task each day. Now, a quick reminder, our outcome. By t Oops, what have I done there? By tomorrow, we're going to have written a description and we're going to have answered our question. And we've been using a model to help us understand what a good description looks like. Okay, so here's our model. Now, year five and six, please can you pause the video and like you just have a read through of the model text again, please. And just remind yourself, what makes a description successful? What sorts of things are we going to be um, using in our writing to really help the reader picture and imagine our, our storm? Okay, hopefully then you've been uh, reading the model text and you've been thinking to yourself and deciding, reminding yourself what makes it successful. So we've spent a lot of time this week thinking about the vocabulary choices we're making and ensuring that we're choosing the most powerful and accurate vocabulary that we can. So for example, um, we've been looking at this sentence quite a lot, haven't we? The guardians of the forest twisted and knotted their ancient branches together. I could have said they're old branches, 
but I decided to use ancient as it sounds a little bit more mysterious, a bit more magical perhaps. I could have said the trees twisted and knotted their branches together, but instead I chose guardians of the forest. Okay, so those trees are stood at the edge of the forest, protecting it, looking over it and watching it. Or at least that's the impression I want to give my reader. We talked a lot about being really creative with your writing, through using similes, onomatopoeia and personification. So for example, we had dry twigs cracked and rustled. And lots of you sent very impressive and interesting similes. We've been thinking carefully about the adjectives and adverbs that we've been using. We've been trying to vary our sentence starters using fronted adverbials, such as from above, turning around, deep in my chest, beneath my feet. And some of you correctly spotted yesterday that we started this sentence here with what type of clause? Can you remember? That's right, a subordinate clause followed by that comma. Well done to everybody that spotted that one because that's something we learnt last week. We want to make sure it's in this week's writing. Now, our focus today and something we're going to add to our success criteria is structure and a fancy word cohesion now don't be panicked by that word year five and six because all cohesion means and this is well it's not that it means this but it's the easiest way to think of it is that your writing flows so each sentence is linked together Okay, they're not random sentences, they're not random thoughts. They link together, they build upon each other. Let's have a look at an example in the text. Okay, get a green, oh, green pen this time. Here we go. Um, I'm going to come back to actually my sentence about the trees. So we're looking for cohesion, where the ideas flow and build upon each other. So the guardians of the forest had twisted and knotted their ancient branches together, welcoming victims in through an archway. So we're focused on the archway at the moment and the trees. Beneath my feet, a soft white mist illuminated the path ahead. Okay, so now our picture is building. It's linking together because we've got an archway. Well, underneath an archway is a path. It's taking us through the description step by step. Dry twigs cracked and rustled as I crept along. Okay, it's building again. Now we're walking along the path. Okay, we haven't suddenly gone and talked about the wind or something unrelated. We've gone from archway to path. Oh, what's going to happen next? Dry twigs cracked and rustled as I crept along. So we're now we're moving. Deep in my chest, my heart beat like a drum, willing me on. Okay, so we know what's happening now as we walk through the forest. So each sentence there is flowing and building upon the last one. Okay, year five and six, and let me now just have a look at the end of this paragraph. How does this paragraph end? There's a particular technique that's been used, and I'm wondering if you can spot it. If you need to pause the video now and just have a read through and have a think, then do so. So have you spotted how it ends? Brilliant. It ends with what we call a cliffhanger or in suspense because it says suddenly and without warning, dot, 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 we're on the edge of our seat. What is it? What happens? We don't know. Now that suspense, that element of being on our seat and wanting to know more started at the beginning. 
because we lost hope at the beginning of this. It was silent. And then as we go through, there's a little bit of sound. Some twigs cracking. It's building a little bit. Now we can hear a drum. A little bit louder again. Now there's a whistling noise. Okay. And then suddenly, silence. Okay, so even the sounds in this paragraph are building. Now we can think about using structure and suspense in a storm because storms don't just come out of nowhere. Okay, they do build. So our target today, and this is everybody at home, is to be thinking about the structure the cohesion of your writing, so how well it flows, okay, and how it builds. Is there some tension that builds? How does this storm start and suddenly get worse? Now, I'm just going to ask you, Year 5 and 6, just to pause the video and get your writing from the last few days ready and your mind map as well. Okay, pause the video now and then come back when you've got those things ready. Okay, so we are at this point on our task wheel. We're on the implement stage because we're going to write our paragraph today. Now, to do that, we've got our mind map ready with all the different elements of the storm that we can write about. And I've jotted them down here. Sky, clouds, rain, hail, wind, thunder, lightning, sea, waves, the foam on the top of the waves, the shoreline, the rocks, the sand, moon, island, possibly a lighthouse. I'm sure you've got more. I've put this um, little visual here to remind us that we can use our senses. And I've got some pictures here to help us. And because I really want to be determined and persevere today, I've put our Explorers logo here to remind me. And I've written my target at the top of the page. Now, this is an example of the type of sentences that Mrs. P.A. and I have been sent. The moon shone brightly over the island. The rain fell like sharp arrowheads. Fast winds raced across the seas, whipping the waves into a frenzy. Now these are great sentences, but do they build on each other? We go straight from the moon, then to the rain, then to the winds. Does this storm, do we get a picture of the storm starting and how it, it becomes worse? Not really, and that is our target for today. So you may be looking at your sentences and thinking, oh, that's something I need to work on. I've got sentences about all sorts of different things. They're not really flowing. So I'm going to show you how to do that now, year five and six. Now, I want my picture to start off quite calmly in my reader's head, okay? because I want to build the tension like my model text. Now, I can see a moon in my picture. So, the now, I've got to remember to describe my nouns. So, I'm going to call it a crescent moon, which is when we see just part of the moon, half of the moon, looks like the moon isn't green, but you can see the shape. A crescent moon. Okay, the crescent moon. Oh, and now I'm going to try and get one of the uh, claws in because I've been learning how, about how to do clauses, which shone proudly over Aaron Moore Island. So my my scene, my first thing we're picturing is that crescent moon, and it's shining over Aaron Moore Island lit the seas welcoming incoming boats ships vessels there we are okay so it's a calm clear night 
Now I want something to happen. So without warning, so I'm not saying suddenly because I know I use suddenly quite a lot. So I'm going without warning. Um, clouds. Hmm, how could I describe those clouds? Perhaps they're grey. Now I don't want to use the word big. Instead I'm going to use vast. Um, grey vast clouds rolled across the sky. Oh, I'm going to have them swallow the moon. So now it's completely dark. Okay, plunging the island into darkness. So suddenly this calm night, without warning, the clouds have come over, they've swallowed up the moon and it's dark. Now again, I, I want to create tension, so I'm going to use that idea of sound. You'll remember in our model text, it started off quiet and then it got louder. So I'm going to magpie that idea. So I'm going to say for a short, or peaceful, because it's calm and peaceful at the moment, there was silence. I remember the model text started off with silence, didn't it, as well? So I'm using that idea. There was silence. <gasps> Ooh, I'm going to say dot, dot, dot. The model text had some ellipsis, didn't it? The calm before the storm. Okay, I know that's a saying that, some, that people talk about the storm. Now, I want some cohesion in my work, so I want now something to happen to these clouds. I'm not going to start talking about something new, I'm going to carry on building a picture of the clouds. So I'm going to say the grey um, mass this time, I'm not going to repeat, well actually I'm going to repeat clouds for cohesion. The grey clouds bulged and rumbled you know, uh, somebody at school gave me this word this week menacingly menacingly or so fright that's um, something that's sort of scaring you or being uh, so menacingly and suddenly what could these clouds do they're bulging they're rumbling as I'm going to say they burst. Now clouds are sometimes described as um, having silver linings. So I'm going to say suddenly as their silver linings burst. Okay, so it's starting to rain. Now when it starts to rain in a storm, quite often the thunder comes next. Now, thunder is electricity. I'm just going to come up and have a look at my picture. Now, they look a little bit like veins, almost like veins of electricity, and they're bright white. So I'm going to try and use that in my writing. Suddenly, as their silver linings burst, veins of bright white electricity that's what lightning is electricity lit up the sky okay so I'm just checking for my cohesion now I'm checking that I'm building upon the previous thing that I've said so I've said without warning grey clouds rolled across the sky they swallowed the moon then I've said it's really peaceful, it's silent, so I need to get a bit of sound in somewhere. Uh, and then I've said the grey clouds, so I'm building on the clouds, I haven't moved on yet. The grey clouds, they're bulging and they're, <gasps> they're rumbling. So I've gone from silence now to a little rumble. The clouds have burst and now bright white light is lighting up the sky again. Okay, so... I think I want to make my storm now a little bit kind of more threatening. It's getting worse. So I'm going to, what did I write about before? 
want to carry on my cohesion. So I've just been writing about the rain. So I'm going to describe that rain now. Now rain falls from the sky. So I'm saying from above, icy rain. I'm going to describe that rain. That was my target yesterday, wasn't it, to use adjectives. From above, icy rain pierced to the horizon. Now that means year five and six that the rain is falling and piercing at the horizon, which is this part here. Now what, mm, the rain's sharp, it's piercing at the horizon. I'm gonna use a simile here, like arrow heads. So an arrow head is a sharp point. So it's piercing like an arrowhead fired from the enemy. Okay, and the enemy is the storm. Okay, it's getting worse. So I've gone from clouds just rolling in to bulging to raining. Now the, the icy rain is, is piercing the sky. Okay, I think I could probably start to talk about the wind now. Okay, so I'm going to say, now yesterday I described it as a wild, untamable wind, which I quite like, so I'm going to use that again. Uh, wind whipped through, I'm going to link this to the foam on the top of the waves. Now I'm going to think about this picture here where the waves look a little bit like horses. So the foam is the white bit at the top. And this looks like in this picture that it's the mane of the horses. So I'm going to use that idea to help me. A wild, untamable wind whipped through the white foam manes of a thousand horses racing towards the shoreline. Now, is it really horses racing? Or what am I actually describing here? That's right, I'm describing the waves, aren't I? I'm just saying that they're like horses. Um, and I'm going to carry on describing those waves because I've said what they look like. But now I'm going to describe the sounds. I'm going to use some onomatop here. The booming sound of the relentless surging waves. Okay, the waves are never ending. Oh, like this, I'm going to use a simile. Like the sound of thundering hooves echoed across the island. Right. Let's see then if my sound builds. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, year five and six, so we can hopefully see everything all together. I apologize if it's too small. That's better, isn't it? So remember our target was making sure that it builds, that we had cohesion, it wasn't just a list of sentences. We were building on the previous piece of information. And I Gave myself the target of trying to get some sound in here as well, didn't I? The crescent moon, which shone proudly over Aranmore Island, lit the seas, welcoming incoming vessels. Okay, so it sounds calm. Without warning, so it's starting to build. Grey, vast clouds rolled across the sky and swallowed the moon, plunging the island into darkness. That's a big change there, isn't it? We've gone from nice, bright now to dark. For a short peaceful moment there was silence, the calm before the storm. Okay so we've got that silent sound. The grey clouds bulged and rumbled, it's a little bit louder now. Suddenly as their silver linings burst, veins of bright white electricity lit up the sky. From above icy rain pierced the horizon like arrowheads fired from the enemy. Gosh, it's definitely getting louder now. We've gone silence, rumbles. We've got um, the, oh, where did we go? We've got the rain now that's burst. It's, it's, that's gonna be a noisy rain. 
A wild, untamable wind whipped through the white foam manes of a thousand horses racing towards the shoreline. The booming sound of the relentless surging waves, like the sound of thundering horses, sorry, thundering hooves echoed across the island. So we end with that big crescendo of sound. Okay, so we finished with that big crescendo of sound and that brings us on to your task for today. So remember your inquiry question, your outcome is a description of Aaron Moore's storm. Okay, so we've had some people writing about lots of different things this week, but please focus on writing about a storm today. And you want your writing to create a picture in the imagination of your reader. Okay, now as you write your paragraph, you've got a success criteria that you've been working on over the last few days. And today, we've built upon that success criteria to try and include cohesion and a building of attention in your writing. And I did that through sound. Okay, now don't forget that this might not be a bit of a challenge to you, but we really want to be determined, we want to persevere to do the best we can year five and six. Okay, so your task today then is to write your paragraph of description. Now as part of that writing, there will be an editing element as well. Okay, because you will need to be editing as you write and you'll need to be improving your paragraph as you write. Okay, the f Mrs. PA and I, we want to see evidence of you editing and improving as you write. So that could be crossing a sentence out and changing it by putting um, a fronted adverbial at the start. That could be changing the word big to a better choice of adjective. That could be changing the order of your paragraph so that you've got some sound building in it. Okay, but it, we really want to see people persevering and challenging themselves today. Now, I cannot wait to see your writing. I'm so excited. Okay, we're a step closer, aren't we, on our task wheel to finishing and um, answering our inquiry question. Good luck today, everybody.